The strikes by the security service of Ukraine drones on airfields and warehouses with guided aerial bombs, cabs, leave Russian troops without key weapons. Ukrainian political scientist Taras Zagorodny wrote about this, commenting on the successful strikes by drones of security service of Ukraine on warehouses with cabs at an airfield in the Voronezh region. The expert emphasizes that Ukrainian drone strikes on Russian territories have become regular. This not only transfers the war to enemy territory, but also affects the situation at the front. Even Russian military experts have acknowledged that after the drone strike of Maluk's team on ammunition depots, their supplies to the front line have decreased. We failed to protect the depots. Now we have problems with supplies to the front line. This is the general tone of publications in the Z networks of Russian telegram channels. Zagorodny emphasizes. The strikes of security service of Ukraine on the airfield and warehouses with cabs leave the Russians without key weapons. It is obvious that each cab destroyed on the ground is a bomb that did not fall on our positions at the front, did not destroy another residential building in Kharkov, Zaporozhye or in the Donbass. The political scientist believes the expert emphasizes that blowing up warehouses significantly undermines the enemy's morale. They know where they will hit, but they are not capable of repelling a massive drone attack. In a word, demilitarization is going according to plan, but they are demilitarizing the Russians. Zagorodny summarizes. Let us recall that it was previously reported that on the night of October the 2nd to the 3rd, drones of the Security Service of Ukraine, the Special Operations Forces and other Defense Forces attacked warehouses with cabs, parking lots for Su-35 and Su-34 aircraft and storage areas for aviation fuel at the Borisoglebsk military airfield in the Voronezh region of the Russian Federation. It was from here that the enemy actively bombed our cities and villages with cabs. Recall that the Russian researcher has possibly managed to improve guided aerial bombs by increasing their range up to 80 kilometers. This poses a threat to Ukraine's civilian population. Serhii Bratchuk, spokesman for the Ukrainian Volunteer Army South, noted that such strikes are purely terrorist, aiming to pressure and break the civilian population. Unfortunately, the enemy has the tools for such strikes and continues to improve them. The enemy, unfortunately, is improving their weapons today, practically implementing the formula of converting high-explosive aerial bombs into guided ones. Using changes in tactical and technical characteristics and universal modules for planning and correcting fire, they are definitely capable of reaching a distance of up to 80 kilometers, commented Bratchuk. In order to completely push Ukrainian forces out of Kursk, the Russian Defense Ministry needs 15 to 20 brigades. We are talking about 50,000 servicemen, which the Kremlin simply does not have at the moment and has nowhere to get reserves. And the fighting in Kursk region has been going on since August 6, 2024. The Russian Defense Ministry stated that on October the 3rd, Ukrainian forces attempted to break through the defense of the Russian armed forces in the Novi Put area. Russian war correspondents write that Putin's army managed to restore its positions in the Vesyoloi area and the battles for the settlement are still ongoing. In this area, the enemy deployed the 83rd Airborne Brigade. Fighting continues on the main Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region. However, it has not yet led to a change in the front line. Recently, Suspilnoi journalists published a report about conscripts who are fighting against the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk region. According to Russian lawyers Regina Ivshina, law enforcement agencies received complaints from mothers of soldiers from 10 different military units of the Russian Federation. According to her, there may be up to a thousand conscripts in Kursk region. Journalists from the BBC wrote that the conscripts are in the 488th and 245th motorized regiments of the Moscow military district. Recall the incursion of several thousand Ukrainian troops into the Kursk region in early August was the first time Russian territory had been attacked and occupied by foreign forces since the German invasion of 1941, a major event by any reckoning. Its symbolic dimension received wide coverage in the Western media. For Russian President Vladimir Putin, it was a grave affront, especially as the operation relied on Washington approving the use of short-range U.S. missiles.
Reactions in Russia to events in Kursk evolved rapidly, much as they did in the autumn of 2022 during the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region and Yevgeny Prigozhin's attempted coup in June 2023. First came shock, then anger, and ultimately acceptance of the new normal. Footage filmed by a witness has shown the moment an overcrowded boat capsized in Lake Kivu in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, killing at least 78 people. In the video that was shot on Thursday, the vessel is seen tilting on an angle before sinking into the body of water. The governor of the South Kivu province said 278 passengers were on board the boat. It sank while trying to dock just meters away from the port of Kituku, according to witnesses. The vessel was going from Minova in South Kivu province to Goma, in North Kivu province. It was the latest deadly boat accident in the Central African country, where overcrowding on vessels is often to blame. Maritime regulations also are often not followed.